Hello and welcome to The Big Fight. We are here today to talk about what many believe is one of the most serious problems that have been facing the country for the last couple of years and that's something called actual governance paralysis on the ground. If you talk to people, whether it's industrialists or individuals or anyone else, it says what seems to have happened is that no one is willing to take a decision anymore. It's as if nobody ever wants to sign a file. And there are various reasons being given for this. You have the government and officials saying, we don't want to sign any file because we are actually honest and we don't want to sign the file because then tomorrow there will be a vigilance inquiry against us. So why go down that route? And the others who say that's actually crazy and there's so much corruption in the system and it's because corruption is being cleaned up that you're actually having a paralysis. And a third way of view would say is generally because there's paralysis in the country uh, as a whole and that's why this is happening. So first of all, is the phenomenon really happening? And B, what are the causes for it? And C, what can we do about it? And then we've got an absolutely top class panel to take us through every aspect of this. Um, I'd like to start off by welcoming Ashok Khemka uh, into the studio, senior IAS officer from the Haryana uh, Kader. It's great to have you with us. I, I we, we do recognize that you are a serving IAS officer. A lot of what you will be saying may well be in your personal capacity. Sure. Prashant uh, uh, Bhushan, national executive member of the Aam Aadmi Party. It's, it's, it's wonderful to have you with us. Sambit Patra is a spokesperson of the BJP. Thanks a lot uh, for being with us. And joining us from the Congress Party, Randeep Singh Surjewala. KTS Sulsi, senior advocate of the Supreme Court. Uh, there are those, sir, who will argue that the courts are not helping matters by also taking a long time and lots of procedural uh, bottlenecks. Dilip Cherian, uh, well, image guru, <coughs> branding guru, who really thinks that the image of India is really taking a beating because of complete and total <coughs> lockjam and paralysis. Views which are somewhat echoed by Mohandas Pai who is also joining us, who is the chairman of the Manipal Global Education Services Private Limited, earlier, of course, from Infosys. So thank you all so much for, for being with us. Um, can, I, can I start off, actually, with you first, Mohandas Pai? Is what I have said something which industry and others perceive to broadly be at the core of the crisis that India is facing right now? No one wants to take a decision. No one wants to sign a file. For the last three years, we have seen that the government has not been working, not been acting. Only now in the recent past, the cabinet committee to clear many investment proposals, you've seen some movement. Otherwise, we have seen that uh, files have not been signed, bureaucrats are not taking any decisions, and they tell you quite openly that they don't want to take any decisions because of the repercussions of, of the pre previous actions, and they say the political boss bosses don't stand by them, and so they're not going to do anything. And nobody wants their future pension uh, to be uh, held up, uh, they do not want to suffer the long-winded court prosecution that happens with no protection for innocent bureaucrats. And uh, whoever has been honest and who has taken decisions has been, uh, let us say, persecuted. So I think it's very much true. We have seen this policy paralysis for the last three years uh, as an aftermath of what happened with the CAG's revelation and after the arrest of the bureaucrats and then the hounding of the bureaucrats, bureaucrats being sent to jail under the Supreme Court order and being kept in jail for more than a year without bail for a white collar uh, offence uh, which, uh, for which they could have got bail and nobody supporting them. So I think what he's <laughs> saying is very much true and industry has suffered uh, till now. Even now it is continuing. You go to government, they don't uh, want to take any decisions even now and even if they take decisions, they're very, very slow. Mr. Kemka, can I get you in? Uh, maybe you could tell us from a sense of, of, of bureaucrats and honest uh, uh, IAS officers, what, what is the sort of situation that you hear around you? Uh, Vikram, all the views which I express in this channel, in this forum, will be personal. I do not tend to agree with the views of Mr. Mohandas Pai. I think there is no governance paralysis in terms of the output which you are giving. Now, if you are talking about the quality of output, whether it is meant for the private or whether it is meant for the public benefit, public benefit could be the citizen's benefit or the business benefit, whatever it is, governance paralysis may be from the limited point of view of the business benefit is not coming across because of certain factors, but certainly the bureaucratic executive cannot take recourse to think that they are not analyzing things on file, not taking decisions because they are going to be hounded. If any bureaucrat thinks so, I think he should as well quit the service. But that is not the case. If you see, I give you two examples. The bureaucrat is like, uh, as we were told in the training days, it's like a race horse. And the, the output of the horse depends upon the rider. The rider is the political executive. 
so the uh, the intent or the will of the political executive is what makes the bureaucrat trot or gallop or run let's take the case of two states west bengal and delhi now west bengal after 35 years of left rule there was a change in government and you see the flexibility of the bureaucrat who were attuned to 35 years of left rule uh, molded themselves to the new working of the new political executive same in delhi it depends upon the kind of political executive that the bureaucratic output depends so if the if the bureaucrats are not however sure of political backing then they will be hesitant to sign files they will be hesitant to take decisions because they are scared they'll be left holding the can no. i mean if you look at it ministry after ministry no. there seems to be paralysis no. uh, vikram let's take the 2g scam had one bureaucrat penned his true opinion on file the scam would not have happened the scam happened because a particular set of bureaucrat said i am not going to take a decision now take a very you know kind of an otios example i give you it is like an sho is seeing a crime in front of him uh, and he says no 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 i am a good man i'll get you know get marked up that is a vip who is committing a crime so i am not going to do any action the second set is who connives who connives with the gunda now both sets are not desirable in the society let me quote edmund burke here the triumph of evil is when the good choose to do nothing so in our society let's not eulogize that kind of bureaucrat who says that look i am not going to take decisions i am not going to sign on files or i am not going to be a part of the system because my pension will be stopped but dilip you know uh, vikram i think the log jam is fairly obvious the precipitous fall of the national growth rate of the gdp growth rate indicates that nothing is happening and the reason is the log jam and the log jam has happened actually at three levels it is unfair to just blame only the bureaucracy though the bureaucracy has replaced what conventionally used to be called application of bind with a supplication of a bind so they've just not been able to actually give anything except excuses to industry and industry is not the only thing in 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 the gdp thing but i think let's look at industry for the moment company after company has come to us and when we look at corporations they they talk to us about issues about their image issues about their hold ups and they say that nothing is moving decisions are simply not happening that's the first level the second level is politicians who are simply not willing to even take a risk and the ones who have taken a risk are now cowering in the backdrop and the third kind of thing is parliament has been in a log jam and almost no bill has passed as the you know yeah. brilliant record of this lok sabha has shown so at all three levels decision making has ground to a halt and that is 3 years old so the impact of that is going to be much more long term which okay. is why mr modi has been forced to say give me 60 months to start repairing the damage you know okay Prashant Bhushan, if you ask, if you ask people, you know, if you ask anybody in bureaucracy, you go into any government department and you say, why is there such a log jam? They blame well two sets of of people in particular. They say, first of all, we think of television anchors and you know, sort of waving papers at people and saying that this is the reverse of what you've done. He said that image comes, and the second image that comes is Prashant Bhushan going in and filing a PIL and saying this is what you have done. So somewhere, do you think, and the the reasons why these PILs were filed or why the media is taken a crusade against corruption is for the right reason that corruption had to be uh, you know stamped out did it go too far has it gone too far and are we now in a position where the honest bureaucrats or the honest officers are also feeling too scared to take any decision what has happened is it's not really governance paralysis it is really loot paralysis <laughs> that has happened so uh, earlier there was a system where in the name of governance plunder and loot of this country's resources for commercial benefit of crony capitalists was going on and that was being done in the name of governance now when this anti corruption movement started and the media also got into the fray and the courts also got into the act of taking up uh, major uh, major cases of corruption etc then this fear of being caught sort of chilled the spine of these not just corrupt bureaucrats but corrupt politicians also so therefore <clears throat> now 
there is no difficulty if the government along with the bureaucracy wants to take honest decisions. Nobody fears that. What the bureaucrats fear is that if the politicians want over them, want them to take corrupt decisions and then if they will resist corrupt decisions, if they insist on honest yeah. decisions, then they will be hounded by their so, political so, masters. So, no, hang on. So, so Chand, if, I could, if I could just take you up on that a little bit. Yes. Look, somebody taking a dishonest decision, right? That person deserves to be hounded. What I'm trying to question and express a certain amount of concern about is a slightly different situation yeah. where, as you know, in practical day-to-day -day life, if you're running a company, or if you're running a country, or if you're running a city, or if you're running a, a, a government department, decisions will always come to you, which are, you know, I can take this decision and benefit this person or take this decision and benefit the other person. And you may sometimes have to choose in that decision making between A and B. And you may do it for perfectly honest reasons. You may do it for genuinely because you believe this is the right decision to take. But at the same time, what, what some bureaucrats feel is that even if I'm taking a decision to favor this person and not this person, because I believe it's the right thing to do, tomorrow I could be facing a CAG inquiry or a vigilance inquiry or something else could come. And that's where the problem is. So how do you address that issue? No, no honest bureaucrat would fear... Uh, the normal anti-corruption system or the uh, court system in this country that they would be hauled up uh, by an honest anti-corruption system or by a court, but it court system. No, it's only the those bureaucrats who want to take honest decisions against the wishes of their political masters. If the political masters want some corrupt decision to be taken. And everybody is not as fearless as Mr. Khemka. Yeah. If a lot of bureaucrats are fearful of being victimized, I have dealt with hundreds of cases, hundreds of cases of whistleblowers. And they justifiably fearful. He's been transferred 45 yes, times being, in the last being two victim, decades. Being victimized for their honesty. So therefore, those people in any case are fearful sometimes of being hounded or victimized if they take honest decisions. They don't want to take dishonest decisions and connivance with their political masters. Okay. So those people will certainly be paralyzed in a way. But otherwise, the persons who are being paralyzed are those corrupt fellows who want to take corrupt decisions, but today have become fearful because of the uh, mood of the nation, because of the crusade of against okay. corruption, because of... The court Mr. Kemka, Mr. Kemka, I I agree, but there is a. The but I'm just asking you the the the, the no, and I want everyone no, to respond I'll, I'll to explain. the scenario which I I'll said: an honest person wishing to take an honest decision, which may favor A person against B person. You know, somebody comes and makes a representation to you and says, "I need this thing done," and you say, "Yes, I think it makes sense," and I, you sign on that file. But you could be asked a question: Why did you do this? Well, uh, uh, Vikram, in my experience, I have not seen an honest officer being hounded or fearing the anti-corruption. What about you? No. You uh, have been hounded. No, no. E e exactly. I mean, the hounding in the sense by the political executive, hounded by the anti-corruption agencies like the CAG or the CVC. Now, how the system functions is, if the bureaucrat is not comfortable, he is simply transferred out. A politician is as fearful of the anti-corruption agencies as the bureaucrat is. So, though there is a system of hierarchy, but it is a uniform kind of note which goes from the bottommost level to the topmost level. Now, there is a dictation by the topmost person that you put up a note accordingly and everybody is supposed to ditto and sign. There is no difference in mind and the topmost person says yes. If one person in the channel says I differ, he is simply shunted out of this chain. So, this is how the system functions. Just excuse me here hounded by the anti-corruption agency. So, I have yet to find an example where CVC <coughs> CAG has hounded an honest bureaucrat. Correct. Now, why a bureaucrat should fear honest decision making? He says, look, I should be fully protected and insured. Then you can as well sit home because even going to the road, there is going to be a risk of a traffic accident. You have to function in government as you take decisions in your house. You have to be a little entrepreneurial okay. so that the public good is served. You cannot have a breed of bureaucrat and encourage such breed of bureaucrats who says that, look, I am not going to take a decision. There can be an honest mistake. There can be an honest mistake, but let us not punish honest mistakes. Okay. 
I want to come <coughs> to you, Mr. Dulsi, but before that, Mohan Das Pai, you want to just respond to what you heard from Prashant Bhushan and from Ashok Khemka? Yeah, if I understand what Prashant Bhushan said, he, he said there are a group of bureaucrats who are corrupt and, you know, we should be against them, that's fine. There are a group of bureaucrats who are very scared of taking honest decisions because they think that they will be victimized, that's fine. What is industry supposed to do? Are we supposed to know who is corrupt, who is honest and do something? And further, Vikram, in, uh, we are seeing that many honest bureaucrats have been charged and the whole process of filing a charge and clearing the name takes years. There is yeah. no justice in the system. How long does it take for an inquiry to be started, a charge to be filed, a hearing to be had, the court process to be completed? It could take 10 years. For 10 years, if your name is going to be spoiled by an inquiry, your future is going to be marred, why will anybody take, take any decision? Okay, Mr. Tulsi, one of the ways in which this entire thing could be made much simpler is if anybody who is put in that position, who is being victimized, who is unnecessarily facing charges for something that may not be his or her, her fault, if they could go to the judiciary and get quick and fast and effective and cheap, I might add, redressal, you know, without having to spend 10 years in the courts and spending lakhs and lakhs of rupees on legal fees, which will drive them bankrupt, I think you would have a lot more people being willing to, to, to take the right decisions. Absolutely. But the judiciary doesn't help in this. No, I wish it would, it, it would happen. But the biggest problem in, in, in India today is that the process has become punishment. The process of pronouncement of guilt or innocence takes so long that your lifetime is gone. And the other thing is, like the Ahmadmi Party has a completely, you know, double standards. Before, when the, when the Congress government, Mrs. Dixit's government was in power, and they wanted to subsidize the power and said that we will pay the subsidy to the discoms. Aam Aadmi Party opposed it. They said, this is loot, this is corruption, this is money going out of my pocket. And when they came to power, that's exactly what they did. They didn't want so to if somebody the else does it, it's they loot. They wanted to if, subsidize if, the companies. Actually, okay. They are the also problem. subsidizing the company. <laughs> okay. Let, I, that's exactly I what they did. I don't want to get distracted a bit into um, into, 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 into politics, uh, so we'll, 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 we'll just move on from that. How do we fix this part of it? Prashant is a PIL enthusiast. He has done a lot of work. But I believe judiciary's primary task is adjudication. I can accept them doing PILs if they have finished their cases. If the adjudication is going taking 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, I don't think PIL, the luxury of PIL, can be can can the judiciary in India afford? Prashant. Okay. So, so Mr. Tulsi is saying that if the court the can PIL take up has a gone case, all wrong according to me, which can prevent the loot of millions of people in this country, which can prevent the human rights it violations of millions of people in this country, the judiciary should not take it up. Twenty-five but, years PIL has not prevented it. Take up. That. Take up millions of individual cases which may take 100 years. You see, the judiciary has a serious problem. Ideally, we should be able to both, right? Because yes, yes, of course. The judiciary, there is a very, very serious problem with the judiciary. It's not merely the problem of delays. It's a problem how, of how, how do you do that? Access. On one hand, there is a PIL going on, monitoring of the investigation. On the other hand, the trial is going on. How can you ever get a fair trial when the Supreme Court is monitoring side by side with the trial? You see, this, this concept doesn't work. There, for 50 years, we have believed that no court can interfere in the process of investigation. So Mr. There are any number fails. of constitution benches. And now, uh, the court wants to not only monitor the investigation okay. to ensure that the in yeah. fair investigation I, takes place, okay. but they, while the trial is going on, they want to continue I, I, that. I, I, do feel, I do feel we need to have another big fight on fixing the judiciary, which I promised That's we will a, do. That was the question. Yeah, so yeah, we are, yes, and you're right. We, 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 I think we need to go into this in greater detail and we will. But let me just come now to the, to the politics behind all of this, because frankly, if there was clearer political will, then perhaps it's possible for to get a lot more things going. So, Samit Patra, let me just get you in. How are we going to fix this particular aspect of the problem? The government is dead almost. Non-functional government. That means there is severe level of paralysis over here. We have a silent prime minister and an equally silent governance over here. Let's, let's see the three, three pillars over which the democracy of the country stands. The legislative, the bureaucracy and the, uh, the judiciary. If we look into the legislative, the answer to your question would be, most of the will is lacking 
in putting self in before the legislature, the, the opposition share that the opposition, frankly, when it comes to the legislative part, the opposition should share the, exactly. the blame. Exactly. Because the opposition has also been it. blocking I'm parliament. I'm generalizing. I'm generalizing the whole issue. I'm okay. not. So legislature, to everyone yes, is to blame. Fine. Everyone. I'm in the nation. And the has, opposition shares everyone, the blame. Everyone. It has to be union. It has to be in unison. Okay. I believe. Presently, right now, what's happening in this country is look at the irony of it. I was listening to every uh, judicious person over here, and the only thing running in my mind was we have a prime minister under whose very nose everything was happening, and every time a prime minister would say, hands up, I did not know. So why are we discussing about a bureaucracy which was ignorant? Why are we discussing about any other system which was ignorant? The Prime Minister was ignorant about what was happening in his very office. So what do we expect? The government has to be in paralysis, nothing else. Secondly, the bureaucracy. We have three kinds of bureaucrats over here in India, maybe everywhere in the world. We have a neutral bureaucracy, as what Mr. Kemka was saying. The SHO watches, does nothing. Okay. Then we have a bureaucrat which buys for himself a post-retirement plan that he has to fall in lines as to what his legislative masters say, as he was in the rider. The rider dictates okay. him and the horse runs because a post-retirement plan is to be bought for him. And then we have a section of bureaucracy like Mr. Kemka who come out with the truth and yet, and yet over here in the TV channels they have to speak probably what they do not feel is right because they are in the system. The system okay. cannot be changed overnight. That's how, and the judiciary at the end. The judiciary has to be very proactive because rest are sleeping. It has to be proactive with the PILs. It okay. has to be overactive so now, because the rest are sleeping. Yeah. No, but also so we are now getting into the territory of we have to change the entire system. <laughs> the, is, no, the, the other big issue which we forget is that uh, though people will jump down my throat for this, we also had some very forward-looking legislation in the area of, for example, land acquisition. And the second big area which was the area of environmental clearance. Both extremely far-seeing legislation but essentially what it meant was Paralysis continued because most people didn't know how to cope with these two creatures in the room. So there were no, two new elephants in the room and besides all the paralysis going on, they just didn't know how to cope with these two creatures which were in the room which had to be dealt with. Okay. And there were gentle so, tax along with the elephant. Okay. <laughs> now let, let, me get the, let me get in the Congress, Congress viewpoint. So essentially what's being said out here is if there had been more decisive and more effective political leadership from the top, then you wouldn't have had bureaucratic paralysis either. Would you agree with that? I think UPA under Dr. Manmohan Singh has done phenomenal work in terms of propelling the country for, uh, forward. And that is proved by not only the gross domestic product that has been consistently increasing except for these last two crucial years when there has been a slowdown all around in the world economy and our economy. But per se, if you see the on, on all indices of development whether it's infrastructure power port airports roads upa has done phenomenally well and that itself establishes that uh, the leadership has its heart uh, where its head is okay.